Okay, so we're going to do Polar Saber 101. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we're holding the sword right and you need to have your thumb here or monkey grip it, depending on the weight of the weapon. Really heavy weapons is actually hard to keep the thumb without losing control. Right. Stance, we got a couple of options. So what we'll do is we'll do the one you've already looked at before, which is going to be just a Part. Okay, so based off this, you're going to be able to lean in and add that drill we did. Yep. Okay, so that drill teaches a couple of things. So here we are, and I launched that cut at you, you lean back, right? So when we're doing this, we're learning not only to lean, but also to do one of the attacks, which is a little melee or a So we're going to kind of go into uh, the attacks and what we can do from there. So there are three kinds of attacks that we're looking at, and one of them is my least favorite, and it's the one that later uh, was done by Sport Fencing, where you simply tap the person, right? And it doesn't have a lot of power. Uh, it, it may be good on the hand, but like that won't do anything to you. So it needs a bit more pop. So that leads us to our wrist mullinings. Do you remember those? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Directions pretty subtly. Do you remember this one? We got one side and the other. Yep. Let's try that. Keep it moving. There you go. Yeah, easy. Okay. So he's got he's got the one side and then then the other. All right. There are then the arm on which we've already experimented with, which is where I come over the head. The hand pulls back almost to a hanging guard, which we can turn into if we need to. It's over the head so that we're safe, and then we bring it back down. That gives us sufficient power. On horseback, you can imagine what that would do to somebody, right? So pretty cool stuff. The attacks, there are three to the head area. Straight down, left, right. And using the Molinae over the head, you can actually do all three. So this would be right, middle, left, right? Try that. Okay. One, two more. Right. Okay. So easy, easy. There are three uh, horizontal attacks. And they'd be head, body, thigh. And it can go the other direction as well. So that's pretty easy. That's been self explanatory. The low ones are a little tricky because there are three low ones that are sort of like the reverse of the high tax. And it's going to be what they call a hellish fourth or um, like a low cut. Right at the side. There you go. Right? And your hands twisted just a little bit. Then there's one straight in the middle, and the best way to do that that we found is just a mullinate right up. Right? And then we either stab or get them or cut them as it would be uh, dead. And then the other one is just cut the side down here. Yeah. Which is kind of awkward, but it uh, covers all, all the sides. So that's all the cuts that they really kind of talk about in the, in the manual that we have. So three top, three horizontal, three low, and they can use the mullinates, the pop cuts, and over the head. Easy. All right. So that brings us to guards. And there's only a handful to kind of go through, so we're going to work on those real quick. Good. So we're up like that. We're going to take the sword out. All right. Good. Now we're in a nice extended guard. Keeps you safe, keeps the bone away from you, keeps your body protected. Retract it. Right. And it works like a window guard. Works pretty well there. Okay. Then we're going to take it right in front of us, straight up, and pull back. Kind of a good neutral position. It's a medium guard. And it's okay to kind of lower it a little bit towards their, their eye, but it's not going to use this. So the sword's curved, and when it's not meant for that kind of thrust, it doesn't work as well when you do that. And then the low guard is just over the, like, like that. Similar to Iron Guard when we do long sword. So that's going to kind of cover there. For footwork, it's mostly linear at this point, if you're going to head your feet apart. Unless I'm trying to keep level as possible, I'm not trying to jump up and down. And I'm not trying to slide, I'm trying to kind of keep it like so. And I can use my rear foot to easily pass to move over. And I can use my front foot to do the same way, same thing the other way. And let's go through a couple of the tricks. And you never told me to cross the tracks. Yeah, I mean, I try not to. So I don't want to do this, right? 
go over. I'd rather have my backflip go over and then come across. If I want to go this way, I don't want to do this. Right? right. I want to come across. Okay. So that rear foot goes this way. Oh, yeah. So, and then, yeah, there you go. And then the foot comes across. See how you kind of move that across it? Right. And the other way, there you go. Okay. That's right. right. That way you don't end up doing this. Right. I mean, you, you want to be cross. Right? I don't have my thousand. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> So we got that covered. We know the attacks are only there. Three attacks. We know the attacks and the three should look again. Three head, three horizontal, three low. We know the footwork's pretty basic and simple. One of time space training. And we know how to lean in and out. Which when your toes are face apart, it's easier to do. It's okay to fight toes four. We have uh, pictures to show that. But then you can't quite as easily lean. So then it comes to the concept of like how to actually fight. And the sword's a little bit heavier. The idea is, it's great if I can just cut you, but I have to control your sword. And I can control by voiding or controlling your blade. So how we're going to do that is, if I launch a Molinae over my head here, I know you're going to parry. You know, it's great if you don't. You sure can just die. <laughs> but you're going to parry. I know that. Okay, right here, you've made a good, good hanging parry. You can curve like this. It'll allow it to slide down. And most guys will have a little bit of power in there. And now stuff's going to happen. If I do nothing, well, you're just going to come around and cut me. Right? But easy enough, right? Mm -hmm. If I go too hard, you're going to cut me. If I go just right, now we both are in this position where I'm going to actually wait for you to do something. I have no good way to cut you. I can stab you, maybe, but it's still dangerous. So I'm going to wait for you, and as I feel you leave, yeah, don't crush your feet, though. Right? So let's go back to where you were. Yeah. As I feel you leave, I'm going to try to keep myself on you. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what your sword does. So you put your sword back, I'm going to be ready to go there. Right? So that's the idea is I'm controlling your blade. I'm not going to go this obvious strike because what a lot of you guys will do is they'll come in, they'll put his blade, and then I care nothing about what's going on here, and I just cut under there. Well, if you're moving your arm up and starting to cut towards my head, it's going to double. Right? I have to control you somehow. So either I have to know that, okay, he's not. Kind of better. Mm -hmm. Cutting that hand out. It's a lot better than trying to kind of go low. Because we don't want to do what's called low for high train. Or high for low. Or where I leave the high guard and I go low. Okay, so we know that. You can void, but void is kind of harder. Here we are. Like this. You're going to drop that sword on my sword. Right. I'm going to drop it on yours. 